Hey guys, how is everyone doing? Hopefully everyone's having a great day today. Um, I know I've mentioned in the last video that we we're gonna start with a new project, like a mini project, but we've been surprised with a like extreme and super fast drop of Autodesk Maya 2023. So we're gonna take a look at it and uh, we're gonna see what the new tools are. We're gonna explore a little bit, maybe play around. This is gonna be like a kind of like a live stream video. I know that's not a live stream, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be exploring. I really don't have anything prepared. Um, I'm just gonna show you here like the like the documentation real quick. Let me just give me one second. Maya 2023, what's new? There we go. So we're gonna go over some of these things right here. I literally, literally just finished installing my Maya. Uh, this is one of the cool things about having a, a license. I've mentioned this before, Maya has the indie license available for anyone uh, on a certain category, and it's pretty much available for everyone around the world. I know uh, usually Blender is like, the it's free and uh, Maya is very pricey, but the indie license is very, very affordable uh, for all of the things that you're able to do. So um, at first glance, there's not a lot of uh, changes. Uh, the icon changed. It's, it's this new, like, cool little icon right there. Um, but other than that, it, everything seems to be pretty, pretty normal. Um, of course, we have a couple of new tools. We have, uh, let me show you. Well, first, first, let's take a look at the list of, of like, the main things that they're, uh, like, sharing. And uh, we're going to be diving on to, like, more into detail on some of these things uh, throughout the, the next following days. Uh, some of them, of course, are things that I don't really use or they're not part of my pipeline. Uh, but yeah, so first of all, we have this uh, updated USD plugin for Maya. The USD is the uh, Universal Sim Description, which is a, a format that the big studios use to move around like humongous amounts of data. Um, it, it's kind of like the like the evolution of FBX. So if, if you want to be like, uh, like exporting and importing things in a, in a more like interesting way. USD works really well. I usually don't like personally, I don't use it. We don't use it here in the studio for, for our projects, uh, but I definitely need to take a look into it because it seems to have some really, really cool stuff. Bifrost 2.4.0.0. So more stuff, more elements, more notes. I'm still on the process of uh, learning all of these things about Bifrost. It's one of my personal projects. And uh, so, yeah, there's more stuff for Bifrost. This one, this one I'm really, really happy about. Uh, it's the new uh, blue pencil. It's called the blue pencil. And um, usually, uh, or back in, in Maya 2022, we had this thing called the grease pencil, which was uh, something that we could add. And now we have this blue pencil. And this is going to be amazing for me because, uh, as you guys know, I love to, to make, like, annotations and stuff. So, so this is going to allow me to just, like, show you, like, here is what we need to do. Let's check the edge loops and whatever. I can also make annotations like this. So, I don't know. Don't forget to mm, turn on your ambient occlusion right so it's pretty cool it has a lot of really really cool stuff uh you can erase like parts of this as you can see so again i think this is going to be really really fun for me uh, especially in the in the teaching department uh, because I, I do i do like to make a lot of like annotations and stuff we have the pencil option we have the brush option uh which i believe we can change like the um, where is it like there's things uh, you can also like this is usually used whenever they're like analyzing a shot and they're like yeah the the ball should be bouncing here and then we're gonna have like a like a squash and then like a like a stretch and it seems like we can like move like uh, frames and up and down so it seems like a really really nice and complete tool these arrows are great yeah I really like it I think it's a it's gonna be a cool addition we're, we're probably gonna take a, a closer look at this one in, in one of the upcoming videos but I really like this new uh, pencil tool. So it's right here, it's uh, underneath your lighting setup. Uh, it's gonna be your new blue pencil, it's called. And it replaces the grease pencil. So grease pencil is gone and we're now gonna have this thing called the blue pencil. Um, let's see, this one, this one's pretty interesting as well. This is pretty much light booleans from ZBrush. Uh, Maya always had like horrible boolean operations in, inside, of its, uh, inside of its stuff. Uh, and now we have this uh, difference A, B, difference A, B, A, intersection, slice, hole, punch, cutout, split edge. I'm definitely going to have to take a dive. I don't know what all of these guys do. Uh, what I do see here on the preview it, is that it's pretty much like a, like a live uh, Boolean thing. So as you can see here, you can like take the shape that you Boolean with and then modify it and change it around. I've mentioned this before, Booleans are not the greatest ways to model things because you get a lot of angons. However, they're a great way to start a project. So like right here, they're doing like this sort of like sci-fi gun. 
it would be a great way to create like the base mesh and then uh, bring it in, for instance, into ZBrush or try to remesh it, retopologize it to, to get like a, like a nice game asset. Uh, Booleans are not bad. I, I just don't like to teach them to my students when they're beginning their 3D journey because they could be like a crutch and they start modeling everything with Booleans and, uh, and there's of course like proper ways to model things. So this new improved Boolean, pretty cool. I think that's gonna be a, an amazing thing. This thing, they released this thing in 2022 and um, it's pretty nice. But I took a look at it and it's really complex. It's not complex. It, it takes a lot of time to do stuff. So it, it's meant to be some sort of like teaching device where I can like program things to show you how to do things. And you need to follow the steps exactly how, like how I laid them out. And then that way uh, you like learn. I, I, I think it's a little bit too much. Um, most of my students are in the high school or college level. And most of you guys are like smart enough to be able to follow along a tutorial without having to have like every single step. It kind of like gamifies the whole thing. And I do think it's cool. It's just a lot of work. Uh, personally for me, it's a lot of work to prepare it. Uh, this is a new thing. This is called mesh wireframe opacity. So now you can change the op or the, the color of the wireframe um, of your elements, which again, it's it's quite interesting. Um, I'm not sure about what practical use it could have right now. Uh, I, I need to think about like how I would use this, uh, but it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a nice little thing uh, that you can change. There's uh, animation performances where it's supposed to be a little bit faster for like simulation and the cachette playback, uh, evaluation toolkit, bakes, everything. Um, usually with every like, uh, uh, What's the word? With every like number, a new number, new Maya, uh, they they add more stuff. So yeah, this is this is uh, this is cool. One thing that I did like um, a couple of years ago when when they every time they updated like to a newer version, it was always like buggy and crashy uh, because they they changed a lot of things. I read on the documentation before starting this video that they built 2023 on top of 2022.3, which was the latest update that we had for the 2022 version. So that tells me that it should be at least a little bit more stable. Um, and right now Maya is competing against Blender and other software. So it definitely needs to <laughs> to make sure that they don't deliver like bad stuff. This is really cool. It's a, it's like a C remesher retopology thing. And it, it gives out like pretty, pretty, pretty nice remeshing results. As you can see here, this is like a high definition Raptor model. And uh, in 15 seconds, you get like a very nice effect, very similar to C remesher in, in regards to time. Uh, but I, I like the result right here. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. If you add this with like a conform that would be pretty cool i don't think you have as much control as in siri measure where you can like draw lines and stuff but we're going to be taking a look at this one because um i do think it's going to be quite useful as well let's see the formers i don't use a lot of the formers there's been like an update apparently it's been uh you know it, it, they always like try to like optimize and make sure things are working as nice as possible again i don't use this the, i don't use them as much uh, i'm not an animator or at least that's not like my main <laughs> my main work so I, i'm not gonna be able to tell you what those uh are or how they change um component tags at this um they've been cast, causing me some issues on the rigging department because if you have a rig done in 2022 and you try to bring it down into an older version it automatically adds component tags and older versions don't have component tags and then it just, just like freaks out and doesn't work. So again, I need to take a, like a closer look at how this work and how we can use them because I, I really haven't like a, gotten like a, a, like a deep dive on, on that sort of stuff. Um, more modeling performance. So it seems like um, it's a little bit faster and then quicker to, to modify like different elements right here. Um, yeah, like multi-cut tool accuracy, it's better. That's that's great because it, it was a little bit wonky. Uh, yeah, just a couple of like big fixes over there. And then this one's pretty cool. Uh, you guys remember the sweep mesh, right, that we have. And uh, the sweep mesh, one of the things that it has, that this one I can show you because I, I do know how it works in this particular case. Uh, if you create curves, right, and then you want to use the sweep mesh to create like cables out of these curves. Um, in, in Maya 2022.3, when you did sweep mesh, it would affect all of the elements, right? Like there would be a single sweep mesh creator node. And with that one, you would control all of the cables at the same time. So you would need, like, if you wanted to modify them like individually, it, it wouldn't be possible. Now it seems like you can grab this guys, go into create sweep mesh and select one node for each curve and hit apply. So now, as you can see, we have three, uh, or like a, a different sweep mesh for each one. And we can change how each, uh, each one of those like interacts, maybe that one's a, a square and then this one is like a rectangle and like a thicker one something like that and maybe this one is i don't know 
another rectangle but with a different width and a different height right so uh, pretty cool I, I think this is quite quite helpful uh because yeah it, it was a little bit annoying that you had to um to modify things as, a, as separate pieces it, it, it's cool that you now when you have a lot of curves you can modify them by themselves it's, it's just a nice little nice little addition i, I mean you could all already do this uh, back in in 2022 by just selecting one at a time but now it's just a little bit faster right like you can you can do this all the time and yeah this is pretty cool we now have the sweep mesh icon which is uh, this one right here uh, which is uh, because sweep mesh is actually a plugin it's not one of like the native tools from from maya so one one thing that some of my students miss here on the windows settings and preferences and plugin manager uh, make sure sweep is turned on because it, it is a plugin that, that does all of these things so yeah that's the that's the sweep mesh let's keep going let's see what else we have oh this is pretty cool oh, arnold i love arnold um arnold has a couple of fixes uh improvement fixes a more like faster cpu and gpu like uh, procedural things it has this denoiser for AOVs, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I don't do a lot of uh, like post work where, where I need to like uh, explode all the elements into different views. For those of you that don't know what AOVs are, every single image that you have inside of Maya, it's made out of layers. The color, the reflection, the ambient occlusion, the specularity, the transmission, this, that, whatever. And um, one thing that some, uh, well, not some, like a lot of productions do is instead of rendering just like your beauty render, which is what we normally do, they, they render the beauty render, but they also render all of the different passes that make up that beauty render. And then you can bring these passes into softwares like Nuke or After Effects or even Photoshop, and you can tweak each specific pass and, and modify things without affecting all of the other passes. So maybe you want to increase the ambient occlusion or decrease the ambient occlusion in post-production. Imagine you render like 3,000 frames. You don't want to re-render everything. So you just change that in post-production as long as you've uh, prepared everything properly. And uh, that allows you to have way, way more control. So one of the problems that, that we had um, or that I knew that the industry had right now was that you could not do the denoising as nicely in the passes. So when you did this process, sometimes you would get like a little bit of extra noise that was not desired. Now it seems like the AOV denoise has been improved and, um, and that's pretty cool. That's just, it's just amazing. It's using the NVIDIA Optics denoiser, uh, which allows GPU denoising, which is great. We're going to do probably a quick test in the next couple of days to see how that works. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, again, that's uh, just some big news on the on the rendering department this one i'm really curious to try um i have an htc vibe that we use for 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 things and uh i've never actually like tried doing any sort of like 3d work with vr because uh, i don't know i just i just haven't tried i also have an, an oculus quest so maybe we'll do one I, I think you guys would like to 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 see how this works i i'm not sure how this can then be converted to meshes or something so that we can further polish them or whatever but it seems like a fun little thing. So now, uh, as you can see, we have the, uh, where is it? Oh, I thought it was going to be here. Maybe it's a plugin. Let's look for the plugin and let's see if there's a VR. Hmm, no, I'm not seeing it. Let's see if it's on a different window. Oh, no, I need to, to download uh, Create VR. Okay, so, so we'll probably take a look at this one uh, later on seems to be free so so that's great so so we'll, we'll probably take a look at this one next week because i'm really curious about how that one works and uh yeah that that's pretty much it one more thing that might be important for some of you guys is that maya 2023 now uses python 3 exclusively so some plugins that you might have might not work just yet especially if they're using like codes or things from python 2 most of them like the ones that i've tried they work just fine uh, but just be mindful that you might find certain like problem with certain uh, plugins and uh, yeah, that, that's it guys. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm like a little kid in, in Christmas because uh, now there's a lot of things to, to uh, take a look at and learn about. Uh, there's more stuff over here and uh, yeah, it's just an update on the substance plugin, FBX import imports. Uh, yeah, it's uh, looks pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff. And so I'm always happy when, when softwares like add more stuff because it, it just means that it's good things for us as artists. So yeah, that's it for now, guys. Uh, again, as I mentioned, just a surprise video talking about the general things. Uh, let me know in the comments what kind of tools you want me to explore from the ones that we've mentioned or from other tools if you want me to, to take a look at them. Uh, because yeah, probably the next couple of days we're going to be taking a look at some of the important ones that we just saw. So thank you very much, guys. Um, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.